Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So, guys, before we start with the session, can you all please give me a quick information if you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well? Great, thank you for good information, everyone. So, before we start, let me quickly introduce our Durga Masterclass community with you all. So, this community of masterclasses was started back in 2019, and since then, we have been closing into more than 32,000 members so far. And in these master classes, we conduct multiple webinars and live events on different topics, including blockchain, IoT, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and big data engineering technologies. And the best part about these webinars are they are absolutely free of cost, so there are no charges involved here. And these webinars are a really great platform for anyone who is looking to get into this industry vertical by learning the technologies that they are interested in. So to be a part of this entire webinar, so we can log, so we can here refer to this link here click on join this group and then you can not be notified for the entire schedule that has been planned for the entire month so first of all let's get started on the topic that we have to discuss so first of all we are going to discuss on the introduction to python then we are going to talk about python features the introduction to data analysis python packages what exactly we mean by numpy and what are different libraries available like we have pandas and matplotlib operations and then we are going to see a small hands-on on these different libraries so python as we know is one of the most dynamic languages available out there so python is used for different use for different requirements so again it is used for web development as well it is used for data for web scrapping it is used it is one of the main drivers in machine learning and data science domain and there are multiple advantages of working with python as well first of all python is an open source language that means python we can say first of all python is a high level language right it's high level it's object oriented and again it is easy to learn because it has a least amount of grammar as compared to other languages and there are multiple features available for python so if you talk about features then python is again offers simplicity so python offers simplicity that means Again, there is less of uh, there is less syntax that we have to learn, especially for those who are coming who are coming from non-IT backgrounds. It is open source, that means there is no licensing involved here. It is free for everyone to use and also as needed. And then it is portable as well, so Python can be shared and it will be and okay, it can work in the same way it was intended to, seamless and hassle-free. And then it can be embedded as well. That means Python can have snippets of other languages inside it, like we have C, C++, Java. We can easily embed them within Python. And then we, it gets well interpreted. That means, again, they, we don't have to worry about the large memory tasks and other heavy, uh, against the CPU heavy tasks as, as they are taken care of by Python itself. And then it has a collection of huge number of libraries as compared to other packages. And then here we have OOPS. So OOPS means the object orientation simply helps to break down complex problems of this world into code. And again, we can provide security to obtain better solutions as well. Now, who exactly uses Python? Now, Python is used by multiple domains and multiple, um, almost every company out there, they have been using Python, like Google, Dropbox, NSA, NASA, Netflix, almost every company, every solution that we can think of, has some way or the other Python embedded in it. And now if you talk about data analysis, then what exactly data analysis is? So it's simply working on analyzing large sets of data and trying to make some meaning, or we can say it derives some meaningful insight out of it, right? So again, data of unemployed youth across the globe from 2002 to 2020. So the percentage increase in unemployed youth in Afghanistan between 2010 and 2020. So we want to analyze this kind of situation. So there we have to make use of Python for that because we have extensive libraries available in Python to help us out. So starting with Pandas. So Pandas is basically a library written for Python programming language for data manipulation and analysis. So Pandas is again useful for heterogeneously typed columns. And again, where we can work with ordered and unordered data set as well. So we can use it for creating multiple data frames where we can store data and then we can even perform calculations on top of it as well. And then we can also, by using pandas, we can slice the data frames, we can change the index, we can convert data, we can join and perform join and merge operations. We can concatenate multiple smaller data frames into a single data frame, and we can change the column headers as well. We can always do that. And then if you talk about the slicing component here, so we can simply slice the components into two different parts by using pandas library. So for example, now for 
for seeing a small use case, what we can do, we can create a small data frame. So for that, we can make use of Sublime Text. Let's do one thing. Let's create a small CSV file directly. Let's save it as suppose data.csv. And here we can define now we can define multiple data sets that you want to make use of. For example, let's say in this CSV file, we want to define what we have. We have index initial okay have ind uh, index integer rate and uh, interest rate and then we have gdb thousands right so we have index then we have the index then we have the interest rate and now we have we have gdp suppose we have gdp so here we can create any small value in terms of csc for example we have four values right we can define suppose 2001 interest is at two gdp as suppose let's say uh, gdp has been defined in thousand itself so we can define any value for gdp here suppose here we define and 50 2002 suppose as two here we can have about 45 2002 or suppose 2003 here we can have two here we can have suppose 54 and then we can have going four and interest say suppose as three and gdp suppose are suppose 52 or suppose 55 itself so here we can have what a simple CSV format as a comma separated value. That is what we define in terms of CSV, correct? And now we want to work on defining again here. We can go ahead and create any kind of slicing options as well. So basically, slicing means what? Slicing it means if, if we want to carve out the entire data set into smaller components, right? If you want to carve out the you can say large data set into smaller components, then we can do that easily by using the slicing component as well, right? We can make use of any Jupyter notebook as well. So in case we have any kind of Python notebook available, with we can make use of Colab or we can make use of Jupyter notebooks as well. We can do that. So here we can now if, if we have Jupyter notebook installed locally, then we can make use of it. In case we don't have the access to any Jupyter installation, then we can use another notebooks that we have Colab. We can do that. So here we have the access to a Jupyter notebook. So we can go ahead and create a new notebook as well for Python 3, or we can use any of the other IDEs available. Like we have PyCharm. In case we have access to PyCharm, we can use PyCharm. In case we have access to this kind of Jupyter notebook, we can make use of it. We can perform, we can define any, uh, we can make use of any platform. All right, we can do that. Whichever we are comfortable with. For example, suppose here we want to work with PyCharm. We can even work with PyCharm as well. For example, let's say here we want to First of all, import pandas. We can define pandas as PD, right? Pandas is a library available, so we can import pandas as PD. If we are using PyCharm, then we have to ensure that we do have the pandas library installed. And if we don't have it installed, then we can navigate to the section called as up here. Now, here we have settings. Under settings, we have project interpreter, right? So here we have to go to the project interpreter, and then within this, we have to so uh, we here we have to choose the library we can say the interval that we have and then we can define the packages so here we can see which all packages are currently installed in this current interpreter that we are currently using we can see the entire list in case you want to install more packages we can go ahead and click on plus and we would be able to install any packages directly from this entire link here. we can do that so sometimes it, it does take a while for this entire list to be populated but again in case we have that then we can make use of all the packages available as you can see here we have pip for this one, but again, currently we're using 3.8 at base or Anaconda. And here we have almost every packages that we need for data science already available. So let's say here we can define import pandas as PD. We can define any data frame, for example, XYZ. Here we want to create a data for web. We can define for web. And here we can define, let's say, we want to, first of all, define details for day. Within day, we can define, let's say here we can define a simple array of numbers, for, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, and then we can go ahead and define the other variable for let's say for visitors. So here we can find suppose for visitors, and for visitors we can again define the value for them in terms of the array. For example, on day one they have been suppose of hundred visit or suppose thousand on day two. On day two it has suppose twelve hundred. On day three it has been seven fifty. On day five it has been suppose fifteen hundred. On day five it has been suppose nine fifty, and so on. Again, and one more, I suppose we had 11, 1150. So these are the number of visitors that we have received on the website. So you can define that. All right. And then 
we can go in and now here we can go ahead and create the entire data or we can define the entire data frame as well right so here we can now if you want we can also define the bounce rate as well so let's do one thing let's add one more by value as bounce rate we can define some as bounce rate and here we can define an under bounce rate we can define any value for example suppose the on the first day bounce rate was 60 percent then we had suppose 50 percent then we had 20 percent then we have again suppose 30 percent and then on day five it we have 50 again on day six we have 20. so for six values for six days we have six number of visitors and then we have six bounce rate also defined here all right and then once we are done we can simply define our, our complete data frame so here we can define this one as df as data frame and we can make use of pandas and then we can define suppose as data frame for what we want to define suppose for xyz for simple web or we can say web data frame where we have saved all of these values as a simple cc value so we can also define so we can also define this one as we can also we can so directly import the csc file or we can go ahead and define our own data frame like we defined right now we can define it now it's not we have changed that best uh let's see we have changed that all right as you can see here so we have simply missed it out so now we have changed that thank you for pointing it out and then if you want to print this we can simply use print as df so now currently the entire data frame is going to be printed right so here we can now if you want to run this up we can simply click on run and the entire data frame is going to be printed again as you can see here the entire data frame has been printed on day one how many visitors and what is the bounce rate that we have received all right now here we are now if you want to go ahead and slice it so then here we can customize this one for example we can also now for slicing the element for only two right so only for the first two details so we can define so here what we're doing here simply slicing the first two rows so for that we can define print and here we can define df now from the given data frame we want to print head and from head we want to print two that means the first two rows should be printed here we can define df head two so now if we run this up again we would be able to see the data frame along with the slice element as in the first two elements have been printed as you can see here now just to avoid confusion let's do one thing let's add this one as a comment so now if we are printing the first two head that means we can see here only the first two entries have been printed if you want to print the last two then we only have to define this one by tail and if you define tail then the last two it, last two details i think the last two entries are going to be returned as a response as a part of slicing the elements all right and if you want we can go ahead and concatenate multiple values depending upon the requirement we can simply go ahead and join the join the values as well now we can take another example or we can stick to the same example if you want for example let's do one thing let's say we create another data frame we can copy this one we can copy this one uh, suppose now here we have two data frames we can name this one suppose for abc web abc web and here we have the same days now uh, here we may have different visitors suppose as 2000 we may have suppose 1800 we may have suppose 750 we may have suppose again thousand itself then we may have 1950 and we may have suppose 2150 and the bounce rate may have suppose this may be 30 percent this may have been 20 this may have been 20 again this may have 30 again 50 and 20. So what we have here we have two data frames xyz web and we have abc web we can create two data frames as well by copying this we can define this one as df1 this one as df2 and this, this df2 will be for abc not for xyz and now if we want to go ahead and train one specific we want to even concatenate both of them together so we can add a simple function as concatenate and using concat now here we can define concatenate as a simple data frame and then we can define by using pd dot con Concatenate. We can define what that we want to concatenate. We want to join two, which two data frames. We want to join DF1 and we want to join DF2 as well. All right. So we can define this one as a part of concatenate function. And now we're going to print this. We can simply define this one as a simple print statement where we want to print concatenate data frame. So they both. So these two data frames are going to be joined together and they are going to be printed. We can do any operation we want to there. So as you can see here, both of them have been joined together. So now we have we have days, right? And then we have the visitors and the bounce rate being defined for both. All right. 
So if you are looking to merge this, then we simply have replaced current catalyst by using merge. That's it. Uh, suppose here we can, or oh, let's do one thing. We can copy this. So here we can define this one. Suppose here we can name it as suppose merge, and we can replace this with merge as well. And then we can define which data frames we are going to merge. So here, and here we don't have to be specific. We don't have to even include these two different brackets. So we can simply define merge. And now if you want to print merge, not the concatenated one, then we can simply define merge. So again, this, these two data frames are going to merge together, and that's how they are going to be simply printed as a part of index value. But again, here we have to ensure that we have to again which column we want to make common right that is what has to be defined here all right so as you can see here this has not been printed because there is no index value we define here we have to define a common value when we are going to merge it right so for defining a common value here we have to define index and then under index we have to define which should be the common value defined here right so again here we can define days or we can define days as a common index value for example here we may have multiple details suppose we may have index value defined as years right or suppose we may have index value defined as number of days as well right so we can define this value as going which is going to be our index and that's how that index value we will use as a base and that's how it is going to be joined together itself all right so for example here we can define suppose in the suppose as one two three four five and again suppose this is something that we can define for both let's say we add the index for both and if you want we can take up another example as well so again if we are if we find this one up to be a bit confused we can take up another example as a reference so basically here we can define pandas let's suppose here we have two different data frames available with us that we want to make use of like we have already have one previous example that we can use for a better understanding so here we also have two different data frames. Uh, we have also have two different data frames defined and now what we have done we are simply merge them together for finding out the entire merge details now this is another program that we already have and again if you want we can simply run the file here so having the common index value they are both are going to be merged together as you can see here based on the common values so now we have although we have two data frames but again they both have been merged together itself that's how it works and same way we can perform multiple operations on just slicing here we can define merging we can simply go ahead and work on joining the elements we can work on concatenation that we discussed so there are multiple libraries that we can define as and when required as for the requirement thank you so much for joining guys and have a great day ahead take care bye bye